Hey guys, Angry Monkey here. And Jackson Farrell from Hot Pile of Garbage. We're doing some more 999 or 799. Uh, yeah, Ace, Ace, Ace is still alive, we know. Um, so he's. We're, so, oh, so that would have been 799 instead of 699. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we're playing 999. We're in the. We're in a. We're behind door three, and we found something. We're, we're smelling something disgusting in this room. Yep. Dark room, lights on. Let's see what it is. Oh, okay. We got puppies. Yeah, there was a soft click on as the lights came. Oh, there was a soft click as the lights came on. It had scarcely faded when another noise pierced the air. A scream. Uh, okay, so Junpei's breath stopped in his throat. The scream was so piercing it stopped my breath. His heart ceased to beat. Heart attack! <laughs> Doesn't that make the thing fall off your wrist? Maybe it'll fall off my Continuity wrist! Continuity error! Oh no, it doesn't, oh. does it? His mind scrambled to make sense of what he saw before him. What was left of the body sat in a sea of blood. Chunks of flesh torn from the body sat in the blood like tiny islands in a great red sea. Sea of blood. A vast, ragged hole had been torn in the torso, and what remained of his intestines spilled out like fresh spaghetti. Smaller chunks of meat had splattered against the wall and began stuck there as they dried. Globbles of yellowish fat had left trails like tiny slugs as gravity pulled them down the wall, even as they dried to it. Looks like an explosion. Seven's voice was low and strained. Just like the ninth man. The detonator in his bracelet set off the bomb in his gut. It looked as though the explosion had been quite powerful. His legs were both bent in an odd, unnatural way, and his left arm had split open, exposing the painfully white bone of his ulna. Ulna's? <laughs> his bracelet lay next to him. It seemed to have hit the wall hard enough to have shattered the display, which lay on the ground in pieces. Half of his head was simply collapsed. The blood coating almost made it look like raw pizza dough covered in tomato sauce. Kind of, kind of makes you not want to eat pizza for a while. Yeah, a lot of food that this narration is ruining. <laughs> His clothes, too, were covered in blood. Yeah, now I can't eat clothes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the burgundy tie, the white shirt, the jacket with yellow piping, and the gray slacks. <laughs> they were all familiar to Junpei. Is that snake? Santa's voice wavered as he spoke, his mouth dry. Oh my gosh. Finally, Junpei spoke. Why did this happen? No! Suddenly, June was screaming, her voice broken. It was an eerie scream full of insanity and not entirely... He okay, so her insanity meter... Ding, 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 ding! <laughs> no! No, 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 no! She shook her head violently and grabbed fistfuls of her own hair. She's going to pull her hair out. She's going to look like Ben Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> Junpei could hear the sound of her hair tearing. Ooh. No. Stop it, June. Not your hair. <laughs> You're going to look like Ben Franklin. <laughs> he grabbed for her wrist. But as she did, June leapt up and ran toward the exit. Uh-oh. Oh, she has lost Please, it. Please, get me out of here! Yeah, get me out of here! She screamed at the door, and her fist slammed against it with a hollow sound. Junpei could see drops of blood on her knuckles. Boy, I feel bad now. I insisted <laughs> on going doing these horrible through things the to door us? with her, and... What did we do to deserve this? My selfishness has driven her over the edge. She screamed again, a desperate, mindless cry. Her fist flailed against the door. I'm a monster. You're a monster! <laughs> it reminds me of the ginger prophet. You're a monster! <laughs> I'm not the monster, you are! <laughs> Get me out of here! Please, please, just let me out! Junpei couldn't watch anymore. He ran to June and wrapped his arm around her, pulling the screaming girl away from the door. No, get off me! Let me go! Let me go! 
She scrambled for a moment, her legs skittering across the floor, but her resistance didn't last long. As suddenly as her outburst had began, it was over. The manic energy reappeared or disappeared, and her body went limp in Junpei's arms, and she died. June collapsed toward the floor, and Junpei knelt down with her as she died. No. No. <laughs> he, no, no. He felt drops of something warm and wet. It was her pee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was she, was she crying? <laughs> well, it would be pretty embarrassing if you wet yourself. Well, I mean, I've heard of the crap getting scared out of you, so... Yeah. Uh, I mean, this this is pretty scary to come across a, uh, a guy named... A guy that you've come to know as Snake, and his face is all smashed in, his intestines are splattered everywhere, and you're trapped in a room and you can't get out. That, that's probably a reason to, yeah. to pee yourself. I can't guarantee that I wouldn't totally lose it in similar situations. Okay, so anyway, she began to sob. Oh. Uh... Shoulders shook, and great hot tears rolled down her face like rain. We're gonna be fine. It's gonna be alright, June. It's going to be okay, Kenny. Her name was a whisper. Kenny. I'll be here with you, okay? She nodded once. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chubby. Her trembling voice pulled at Junpei's heart. He stroked her hair gently. His face was so close to her. The scent of her hair was nostalgic. Okay, now this is getting weird. <laughs> hair can smell really nice, you know? Yeah, but it's just kind of weird. It's creepy? Yeah. It's kind of like, um... There, there is somebody that we know from work, and, um... He has walked up to some of the females that have, um... Work, have, have, that started there. And he followed one of them down the aisle and said... You smell nice. And just kind of stood there staring at her for a few seconds and then walked away. Leaving the girl to think, that was weird. If this is the same guy that I'm thinking of, he's complimented other men on their smell as well. <laughs> Myself being one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yep. If, uh, see, secret tip for all you people at home, uh, if you think someone smells good, Keep it to yourself unless you know them really well. And even if you do know them very well, it still might weird them out. It might be okay, but it'll still weird them. Then there was also a guy in high school, and uh, he walked up to me, and because I, I, it was like my first or second day of wearing a, a new type of cologne, and he says, yeah, I kind of wanted to say this to you all day, but I figured it'd be kind of weird for a guy to say this to another guy. But you smell good. Oh, thank you. And I don't remember. He might have hugged me, but I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Yeah, but it was kind of one of those where the way he was saying is like, "Yeah, this is kind of awkward, but you smell good." So well, at least he acknowledged the awkwardness. Yeah, that that kind of takes a little of the edge off. Yeah, so it's one of those. Oh, thank you. And so, so it didn't really. But if he would have just been like. You smell good. <laughs> well, that's super creepy. <laughs> but there was also a lady that used to to work. Uh, I, I think she, I think she was gone when when you start. I, I don't remember, mm -hmm. but um, but I guess that's not as awkward because it was a lady, not a man. But she always knew that I smelled good, and so every day I walked in and um, after I would say hi and talk to her for a minute, and she would and she would uh, grab a hold of my shirt and go. <sighs> <laughs> that's a little weird too. Yeah, but. Since it's, since it was a female, no matter what age, since it's a female, it's one of those. Yeah, okay, whatever. If, if, if it was the same person that we were talking about a minute ago that did it, like, okay, dude, that, that that's a little too much. Yeah. But if you folks have any smell stories too, feel free to join in the conversation. <laughs> We'd love to hear your weird smell stories. <laughs> All right, let's let's get back to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Do you feel better? Yes, but I'd like to stay here for a little while longer, at least. Chumpy's body is so warm. You made it weird. <laughs> yeah, uh, and so Santa's like, uh, June, you do realize there's a dead body over there? And we're here too. I mean, this isn't strange at all. I know, it's not strange. <laughs> it's, it's nice to have me and Chumpy together. 
uh, you do realize that we're still here. Oh, right. I forgot about that. And you do realize there's a dead body over there? Oh, Don't yeah. remind her. No! That doesn't even <laughs> it's, okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You're so warm, Jumpy. <laughs> well, yeah. I am. Okay, so he bent down, put his arm under June's, and helped her up her feet, up to her feet. Mm. They didn't speak. Yeah, neither did Seven or Santa. A person was dead. No, don't remind me. <laughs> they had died in that room in a terrible way. Jupe knew there was no way he could make himself forget that. Yeah, because it's right there. There was no way any of them could forget it, but mourning would do no good. They spread out their room, but each felt as if their heart was made of lead. Okay, there, and there, and there, and there, and so much stuff. It dissolves into words. How does it do that? Well, then again, pictures are worth a thousand words, so... There you go. It's just separating into its constituent components. No, exactly. All right, let's see if anything happens when I turn you... Nope, nothing. Not even a drop. Is the pipe clogged? Hmm, is it? Doesn't look like this shower works. How about this one? There's water coming out of the shower head. Is this the same music from Door 7? <laughs> no, it's a little different, but it's similar. Hmm. Maybe it's no, it is the same. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, it is the same. Yeah. It's hard really? for me to tell. Here. I, well, I, I mean, it's hard for me to tell because I don't pay a whole lot of attention to the music. Well, I, I pointed out when we were in Door 7. Oh, okay. The the happy pop synth that oh, you... Oh, yeah. It's all jazzy and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay, turning that down a little bit. Yeah. Okay, let's see if... Crud! That's hot! Just like me. Really? And me. I'm you said yourself I was warm. Man, and that now I'm hot. <laughs> that water must be just about boiling. How about the little panel here? Ooh. Open wide. Okay, here's a note. Always read the instructions before you fiddle around with things. Drainage valve operation. Please do not flush the water in these pipes. Doing so may cause the drain to overflow. Huh. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> okay. Now we're having fun. It looks like the flow of water can be controlled with these handles. We can't put any water through the pipe on the right, though. If we do that, it'll start overflowing from the drain. Okay, so how does this work? There's probably a clue somewhere, but. Yeah. We haven't checked out everything we can. Right. Let's, uh. Here's a drain. Pull it up. It looks like a card. Like a key card. I wonder if we can get to it somehow. Don't think so. It's too deep. I can't reach it. It doesn't look that deep. Well, I guess we gotta overflow the drain. Yeah, the it, card it, but it, it told us not to. Well, maybe we'll just have to break the rules. Ah. Yeah. Well, according to Zero, that might get you killed. It's a thermometer, man. Maybe we'll have to follow the rules that tell us to break the other rules. Mm. Can you get it off? No. It's screwed onto the wall. Notice how screwed was in bold. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and if we can't get it off the wall, I expect we'll be screwed too. <laughs> Why didn't we keep the screwdriver from before? I don't know. I always wondered that. We, we get a screwdriver in every room pretty much, and we never keep it. <laughs> Well, I guess if you go through a room that doesn't Ew. have... Ew. What do you think this is? It looks like tar. <laughs> it came out of somebody's butt. <laughs> it's kind of... Gross. <laughs> it's kind of sticky. I don't think we can just wipe it off. <laughs> Not that I'd want to. I doubt just pouring some water on it's going to help much either. What about hot water? Hot water? If we had some really hot water, like boiling hot, then maybe it would wash off. Hmm. Ah. Where can we get some... Some pipes. Connected to the tank on the toilet. It's nice. 
It's a water tank for a toilet. I've seen a lot of OC guys try and hide a piece in something like this. Usually for a 187 or something. Guess they think it's clever. Don't know when they'll figure out everybody else thinks it's clever too. <laughs> huh? I mean, I know peace, but what's OC? Organized crime. What is that? Some kind of police slang? Huh? Uh, uh probably. Huh? What'd I say? Why does he look all sad now? It's not really important right now, guys. Let's just check it out, alright? Well, he's not wasting any time. Okay, the tank. Toilet's tank. Doesn't look like the pipes are supposed to take water to it are working. Hey, there's something in there. You see it? Um... There's something inside the tank. Is it... The... Handle? It's a screwdriver. Yeah. It looks like the handle of something. <laughs> well, well, it's a handle to the screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> How convenient that the screwdriver has a handle. It would not be much use without... Yeah, you kind of need to get a handle on these things. Yep. You gotta... Uh, wait your turn. <laughs> wait, what? You, say, you know, you turn the screwdriver. Oh, I gotcha. You wait your turn. <laughs> the thermometer was screwed on the wall. That meant that Junpei needed to take the screws off with the screwdriver. While he was so engaged to Jun, Santa <laughs> suddenly spoke. Don't we wish. <laughs> hey, uh, Junpei... You know why thermometers only go up to 107 degrees Fahrenheit or 75 degrees Celsius like this one? Jupe answered without taking his eyes off the screw. No, can't say I ever thought about that. Well, at 170 degrees, the cells in the human body start to die and the organs begin to shut down. Proteins in your cells start to harden. It's like when you hard boil an egg. Even if you cool it down afterwards, it won't go back to being a raw egg, man, so... Oh, Eggman hit. In other words, it's dead, man. You're a Sonic fan, Santa? <laughs> yeah, I play a little bit of Sonic. Sonic Boom. <laughs> Sonic 06. Those are the best, man. No I got I, I gotta I gotta I gotta play that on my channel sometime. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why thermometers don't go past 107. There's no point, man. Why had Santa brought that up, Jupe wondered. Oh yeah? He continued to work at the screw. But it's pretty rare for a fever to get that high. Even viruses and stuff don't usually drive the body temperature up to 107. Of course, there are other external things that could happen, man. Like what? Well, let's see, something like getting locked in a sauna, or getting thrown into an incinerator and burnt to death. Well, ah, yeah, I guess that would get a little hotter than 107 degrees Fahrenheit. Junpei gave a short, barking laugh. It was kind of like, ha! 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 Ha ha ha! A moment later, the screw fell off. And maybe Junpei has a few screws loose, too. <laughs> uh, I think Jun and uh, Santa do, too. Yeah. We're all crazy. Yeah, here. we're all crazy. That's an Alice Cooper song. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he sings... We're all crazy, and they have—he has like a, a backup uh, chorus of, of female singers that are singing that too. It's from the album "From the Inside," and it's basically a concept album about when he was in an insane asylum for his uh, alcohol uh, alcoholism, mm -hmm. and he wrote a bunch of songs about being in uh, an institution. Well, they say to write what you know. Yeah, and, and it's amazing how people can take a, you know. That's a, negative, good album too. a negative, undesirable experience, like being into, in a, insane asylum and recovering from alcoholism and whatnot. Yeah. And they turn it into art. Yeah. Very cool. Anyway, all right, I got it. Oh, and uh, after we finished talking to Santa, we got to call it an episode. Okay. Okay. So he huh? looked up at Santa and glaring at a blank section on the wall and blah blah. Nothing. Forget about it. Santa spun around and walked off, away from Junpei. But as Junpei watched him go, he didn't look angry. He looked very, very sad. Hmm. And wrap it up here? Yeah, why is Santa sad? 
Maybe we'll find out next episode. Maybe we'll find out in a few episodes, or maybe, maybe you've got a theory, or maybe he's Leave just a comment. Maybe he's just sad because he's sad. Maybe he is sad. Maybe, because maybe he's maybe, maybe, maybe he's sad because we're all gonna die in this godforsaken ship. <laughs> and Probably. on that note, we'll see you next episode. Bye bye. <laughs>